scientist, the guy? I saw you on TV. So one of the biggest questions that has never really been answered directly is what happened after the events of the original Jurassic Park? And what I mean by that is like what happened immediately after that movie ends? We don't really get any confirmation on the corporate side or even how the dinosaurs were treated once that movie wraps up, but there's an entire four year section of film and film stories that has never really been explored inside of this franchise. What's going on guys? Hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I wanted to talk about the most important story in Jurassic Park's history that has yet to be told. This is pretty much the foundation of every sequel in the franchise and it all takes place during the events in between Jurassic Park and The Lost World that I honestly think would make for an extremely interesting movie if they ever wanted to make another one of these that wasn't set after Dominion. When the Lost World Jurassic Park starts, all we know is there's another island with dinosaurs on them and they want to go there and wrangle up as many as they can to put them at another Jurassic Park on the mainland. That's really all there is to it. But in between movies, a massive event happens that in my opinion, would make for an incredibly cool story. What I'm talking about is Hurricane Clarissa. This was a massive storm that hit Isla Sorna in between the events of the first and second movies that was so serious, everyone had to evacuate the island, all the dinosaurs were let loose, and Hammond called it an act of God. It was something that was significant to the franchise because, and I don't think people really understand this because we've never really dived into it, Engine was still on the island after the events of Jurassic Park. Not the first island, Isla Nublar, but the second island, Isla Sorna, which was the factory floor. It's not really made clear what was going on there apart from obviously cloning dinosaurs, but we do know that the Jurassic Park on Isla Nublar was just one of many parks that was originally supposed to be open to the public. In the first film, we see Jurassic Park Europe. We see other stuff in the sequels like Jurassic Park San Diego, but this was something that I think was really serious because not only did the park on Nublar fail, but then they had to evacuate all of the remaining staff on the factory island because of this hurricane. You have to put yourself in the shoes of someone that lives directly in this universe. You're a park worker living on Isla Sorna. There's like little areas to stay there. There's a gas station, an operations building. Everybody dropping all of their equipment, sirens ringing out. They have to leave the island. Get on the boat now. This hurricane is not going to let up. It gets worse and worse and worse. They probably didn't even have the ability to take all of the staff off of the island at once, which means that they could have been like multiple trips back and forth. So there could have been casualties while this stuff is going on. And remember, the dinosaurs have never really had to deal with something like this before. They've only been alive for like five to 10 years. And for them to just flip out over like an actual storm hitting the island, that's a massive hurricane. Velociraptors, tyrannosaurs, there were carnotaurs on the island, Comsignate this running around. And then you've got the big mamenchisaurs, brachiosaurs, Triceratops. Can you imagine what that was like? All of these animals freaking out at the same time. Darkness, lightning, winds going a bajillion miles an hour. It ain't got nothing on the hurricane that hit the island in the first movie. This would be a significant event. Just imagine some guys trying to board the boats and then here comes a Triceratops barreling after them, freaked out of its mind and they can only see it through like lightning strikes or something. Hurricane Clarissa was one of the most devastating events in Jurassic Park history that has never been shown to the public. When the Super Bowl trailer came out for The Lost World, they even played with the idea of having lightning, blackout, and dark clouds, and you know, the Tyrannosaur storming around uh, before coming at the screen. That to me was always what I thought Hurricane Clarissa was like on the island. It would have been something that you wouldn't have even seen much. I know a lot of people consider, you know, hurricanes, they think rain, torrential downpour, but this has always got me thinking the winds had to be so severe and so serious that it was mainly just lightning, blackout darkness, dinosaurs that you could only see at night when the lightning strikes, and chaos all around everything. At the worker village, there's a set of apatosaur bones that actually lines up directly with the piping that's made for the industrial building. These animals weren't really in cages and fences like they were on Nublar. So it's crazy, it's like when that hurricane hits, and everyone's scrambling to get to the boats and planes as fast as they can, that's gotta be a really, really scary event. Okay, we got you on our scope. Just keep moving. Where are they? 
One of the reasons I think that this entire portion of the franchise should be covered in some way, shape, or form, you know, some sort of story, is because without this event, you don't really get The Lost World or subsequent movies that come after it. Even Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom mentions The Lost World in its uh, early plot stuff with Benjamin Lockwood, so I always thought it was kind of weird that we never saw Hurricane Clarissa actually hit the island full force. Just to put things into perspective, after Jurassic Park wraps up, up. Ian Malcolm is stuck in a hospital in Costa Rica where Julian Moore's character Sarah Harding you know becomes close with him and he starts telling her all these crazy stories about dinosaurs on an island he's obviously been hurt really really bad by something but she doesn't have much to go off of and meanwhile when all of this stuff is taking place and Malcolm gets a little bit better he goes out in public and tells people hey there's dinosaurs on that island, and Peter Ludlow embarrasses him on national television in front of, like, the entire world, making him out to be a, a laughing stock. Nobody takes him seriously, and it kind of destroys his reputation and career. <laughs> Right after that happens, if we go by the script anyways, uh, the actual date is supposed to be 1995. That's when Hurricane Clarissa was believed to hit the island in David Kep's script. I know that there is some confusion, but I'll get to that later. So right after Malcolm gets embarrassed by Peter Ludlow, the hurricane, just like Hammond says, an act of God, destroys what was left of Site B's facilities. Whatever they were still even there for to begin with. My best guess is that behind the scenes, people were trying to figure out what to do with all of the engine material. Like, should they put dinosaurs in a different theme park? Should they keep cloning them? Should they just take care of the ones they already did clone? It's hard to say because in the movie, Hammond even says he's surprised that the dinosaurs are still alive. So they had to have gotten out of there really, really quickly and they were only remaining on the island to kind of take care of the dinosaurs and maybe put them somewhere to save the company in the future. This is a pretty big event and to just see a Jurassic Park story set in 1995 and actually go over this massive storm and what happened to the island would be awesome. We have so little information on this, by the way, that most people believe that the storm that destroyed Isla Sorna's facilities is the same storm that hit Isla Nublar in Jurassic Park. I know I did for all those years until I actually sat down to read the screenplay for the second movie. But yeah, it's something that I think would be very interesting to actually dive into in a future film. And I just, this is the story that a lot of people would love love to see brought to life on the big screen. Hurricane Clarissa is one of the most significant events in Jurassic Park history. It's never been told to the public, and all we really get is little snippets of information in the Lost World Jurassic Park. Think about it. There's a big, important event there that has never been discussed or shown to the audience at all outside of maybe you could argue the Super Bowl trailer, but that's kind of it. Anyways, guys, those are all just my own thoughts and opinions on this subject matter. What do you think of this untold story in Jurassic Park's history? Would you like to see it told some way in between Jurassic Park and the Lost World? I know I would, and honestly, if they're going to make more movies, I would really, really like them to be set in this time period, in between films or, you know, something like that. Not necessarily before Jurassic Park, because then you can't really have dinosaurs attacking people, but in between the other movies, this is prime subject matter for a cool story. But hey, whatever your own thoughts and opinions happen to be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. I believed you. Now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens and engine executives, as well as all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. You've all helped my channel immensely and I'm incredibly grateful for all of that support. Now I'd like to thank you all for watching today's video and hope that you enjoyed the content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you all consider subscribing. I'll see you all in the next video guys and as always, take it easy.